in this video, the remove list method in Python. So let's start by opening up our terminal and creating a list. So in this case, I'm going to call this list uh, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to assign A as 1, 2, 3. And so what if we wanted to remove the integers from this list? How would we do that? Well, the easiest way to do that is with the Python remove list method. So the remove list method would look like this. We type a dot remove, and then we need to pass an argument. We need to pass that value that we want to remove from the list. So if I pass three, we're going to remove three. And if I check a again, we only have one and two. And of course, we'll run this again. We'll remove, let's say one. And we'll check a again, and now we only have two remaining. We have removed two elements from this list. Next, let's create another list and let's use different data types to see how the remove list method responds. So we'll create a new list. Uh, we'll have one, two, three. We'll use um, some sort of string. We'll do an empty list. Uh, we'll do another nested list with some values. Um, we could do an empty dictionary as well. And so that's our new uh, variable A. So we have some lists, we have some strings, basically just trying to show you uh, that it's not just integers, that you can remove lots of different values. So we could do something like this, a.remove, and then of course we can remove two, uh, and then we can pass different values here, right? So we could pass an empty list and remove that value. Uh, we could pass that list that has values inside it, uh, in this case the nested list with 100. So we can pass that as well, and we can remove it. So. Uh, I think uh, you know where I'm going with this. You know, of course, we can remove the empty dictionary, etc. So that is uh, just trying to show you that how A can remove different data types, different data structures from a list. The next question you might be asking is, okay, but what if there's multiple representations of the same value? And what I mean by that is, let's say we had our list. We'll start with one, two, three. And let's say we had an empty list, 100, empty list, empty list, uh, 100. Okay, so we have two instances of 100, we have three instances of an empty list. So what's going to happen when we pass remove to it? Um, are we going to only remove one instance of it or is it going to remove all of the instances of it? What do you think is going to happen? Well, let's run it and find out. So we'll do a dot remove and we'll pass 100. And when we run that, you can see that we've actually removed that first instance of 100. So it moved the first instance, the first occurrence of that empty list, or sorry, of that 100. And if we ran it again, um, of course, that'll re now remove that second instance of 100. Okay, so now we have three empty lists, and I guess I won't really show you too well, but if we went to remove uh, the empty list, when we run that, uh, we have removed that third empty list. So maybe you might have expected it to remove all of them. Uh, that's not the case. It's only going to remove the first occurrence of it. And sorry, so the first occurrence would have been uh, the, the furthest to the left. So just removing one occurrence with each running of the remove list method. The next thing I want to show you guys is a question you might be asking yourself, which is, Okay, but what if the value isn't in the list yet? What's going to happen? So let's create a new list here. We'll call it a equals one, two, three, and we'll do a dot remove uh, 100. Okay, so what do you think is going to happen when I try to remove 100? When we run that, we see that we get a value error. And it's actually important specifically to note that it is a value error because that'll impact how you do say try accept blocks. But in any case, you do get a hard error. This is going to crash your program if you try to remove something that doesn't exist yet. Now we can actually take a look at the docs to confirm some of this stuff. So here's the list.remove method uh, in the docs. And it says, uh, first of all, by the way, first it says uh, what I showed you guys earlier. So it removes the first item from the list whose value is equal to x. So remember how we looked at we're only removing the first value and not all of the values. Okay, so that's a side note. So now moving on to the value error. 
So specifically, it raises a value error if that item does not uh, exist in that list. And we can click on value error to learn a little bit more. Um, but basically, what I wanted to highlight here is how there's actually a whole lot of different exceptions, right? Uh, you're probably familiar with, with different ones. And so the value error is a very specific error. And we're going to look at that um, in this program that I have created for you guys to show a quick example. So let me break down this example for you guys. So we start with our classic A equals 1, 2, 3 list, and then we have a try accept block. And the reason we're doing a try except is we want to catch that error in case there is an error. So we start with uh, that example we tried before, a.remove100, uh, which we know leads to errors. And I have a couple different except blocks here because I want to show you guys which one it's going to go into. So the first one is a zero division error. And I chose this error fully at random, just kind of from the list here, right? So zero division error. And then next we have a value error. And next we have a generic accept block. So when I run this program, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to get printed out, if anything? Well, when we run this, we get in value error. So in value error, you see that? So we did not get that hard exception that we got in the terminal. Instead, we are printing out the exception. And so what do you think would happen if I was to uh, comment out this block, right? Well, when we run this, we're going to go into the generic error. So this program, this accept block, knows that it's not a zero division error. It knows it's a value error. So it'll first look for the value error. And if we don't have a value error, then it'll go into the generic accept block. And that's why now we get the, the generic error print statement. So this is one way that you could work with the remove list method is by setting up try accept blocks. And that's a good practice. I would also mention that you might just want to do an if statement check to see if the value is in the list first. So you would do something like this. If uh, 100 in a, a dot remove 100. Okay. And then you could set up an else statement if you want and do some other stuff. But that's what's going to happen. And we're going to print out a and we're going to see how that goes. Okay, so we'll do a equals, and when we run this, a equals one, two, three. And you'll notice that we did not get a hard error here. So our program did not break, we're good to go because we did our check first. Now what would happen if I move that a up to the top here? Okay, so we'll try to run this, and we get that same value error that we got in our first example in the terminal, right? So if you want to avoid these value, error, or these value errors and, and any error, basically, you want to do a check first. So you could do an if statement if you want. You could do a try except block if you want. You could even do both. You could do the if and then do the try. Um, so really, it's up to you. Just wanted to show you a couple options here because this is a hard error and you definitely want to be conscious of that. So in this video, we've covered a lot of ground. Uh, we've talked about removing different data types and data structures from lists. Uh, we've talked about uh, the functionality of the remove list method and how it only removes the first occurrence in a list. Uh, we've talked about error handling, the value error, try accept blocks, different checks. Um, so in this case, uh, I guess all I want to do is say thanks for watching. And if you've been following along in this video, you'll know that this print statement isn't even going to get um, printed out. So we could actually switch that to one, which we know is in the list. We could run it again. We get our thanks for watching. Um, we try to remove 100, so that didn't work out too well. But we run it again. It says thanks for watching. We've removed that element in our list. Nothing broke. Um, successfully deployed the, the list method remove. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.